水風たゆとう橋それは漂う雲にも似たもの果てしない海の上に浮かんでおります私たちが知っているこの世界ができる前のことその橋の上にイザナギとイザナミが立っておられましたお二人は互いに話しながらいぶかりましたこの下に陸地はないのだろうかイザナギは玉で飾られた矛を海に突き刺し渦を任せました矛を引き上げるとその先から滴る塩水が固まって島となりました二柱の神は降り立ちその島に住まわれましたお二人の一つ一つのお振る舞いからあまたの神様が生まれましたこれらの神々は日本中に広がっていかれました I grew up in Tokyo and moved to Switzerland when I was 11. The biggest challenge was to learn how to express my opinion. In Switzerland, they said, In Japan, I was taught to not speak my mind in public if I didn't agree. And because I didn't speak, I began to observe certain hand gestures, a subtle shift in the air. A presence in the room. I was always drawn to kimonos. At first, for their beauty, I would wear them when I felt lonely, anxious, isolated. In them, I felt secure, warm, and protected. As if embraced by someone. I started to collect them. Silkworms eat. They spin cocoons. Cocoons are carefully unraveled to obtain fibers. Fibers are spun into threads. Threads are woven into panels, then stitched together. A kimono is born. A young woman wraps it across her body. She wears it to gatherings, celebrations, through highs and lows. She dies. It gets passed on to the daughter. A young woman wraps it across her body. She wears it to gatherings, celebrations, through highs and lows. She dies. Generations of wearers die. The kimono lives on. What happens to the kimono during its life? Does something remain? Maize and kimonos, worn during the women's liberation movement. Between the two world wars, when women in cities started to work and challenge the status quo, they are powerful, bold, dynamic. The opposite of the prototype of a gentle, shy Japanese woman. In Japan today, there's still a long way to go for women. Japan is an island nation where most people conform to avoid being excluded. 
Women are still expected to be obedient and quiet. Thread after thread of maize and unstitched. Stitched back together into something new. rise to the surface to shatter the unchanged expectations of the modern world. Yamanongoku 動くなる